السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم عما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني ألما اللهم فقهنا في الدين إلهي آمين Surah Hud. <coughs> we, will, uh, we will be doing Surah Hud in Barak number, Jews number 12. And uh, it has started in Jews 11, but in only a few ayats. So this surah revolves around Dawatul Tawheed. It means inviting people to embrace Islam. It is a Meccan surah and discusses the people who at that time were not embracing Islam and were adamant on seeing the punishment of Allah and only then they would believe. It is narrated in, uh, in Tirmizi that Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq asked Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, O oh, Messenger of Allah, how have you turned so old? Rasulullah Sallallahu hair was going white. And the Messenger of Allah replied, the reason is Surah Hud, Surah Waqia, Surah Am Amma Yatasa'aloon, and surahs like these. And uh, these surahs have the quality to make you age faster. And there is no living creature on earth whose provision is not in Allah's hands, and he knows all their affairs and place of storage, meaning a mother's womb or the grave, everything is noted in a clear register. And it is he who created the heavens and the earth in six days and his throne had been upon water. According to the scholars, the earth was very cold initially and then it rained plentiful, causing the formation of atoms and molecules which later on formed different kinds of gases and it kept raining for several years, due to which the earth started to shrink and became unleveled. And then the seas were formed. And at this point, there were no living or non-living creatures on earth. At that, at that time, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was placed upon water. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create mankind? He created us to test us. So as to which of us is the best in their deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create the earth meaninglessly. Everything on this earth, be it animals, mountains, rivers, or humans, has a purpose to serve. Take a mosquito, for example. Seems so tiny and insignificant. It has been proven by science that without the exist existence of mosquitoes, there would be no po pollen and nothing would grow. No human animals or plants will be able to stay alive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created earthly life for tests, it is like an examination hall. When you go in an examination hall to give your paper, you complete your con you you, you uh, complete your paper with concentration. And at that time, the paper is of utmost importance, and nothing else matters. But are we preparing ourselves for the examination on this earth? Are we even considering this life to, as an examination? This life that we have been given is our paper and every deed that we are doing is being written by the angels named Kiram and Katibi. On the day of judgment, our paper will be opened in front of everyone and we will be judged according to our deeds. Those whose good deeds will be in surplus will be asked to enter the heaven and those who did shirk and other sins will be thrown in hellfire. And whatever Whatever was learned in Surah Baqarah and Surah Ali Imran about the disbelievers, that they will be sent to the deepest pit of hell, may Allah safeguard us all. Let us ask ourselves that are we better than the disbelievers of that time? Have we not been following the footsteps of Jews, Christians, hypocrites on the Day of Judgment? Our paper will be evaluated according to how we have spent our life on this earth and how we have utilized the blessings which were sent to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we have been ungrateful and not used our blessings for the sake of Allah, then the same blessings 
could lead us to hellfire. We need to ask ourselves if we are wasting our life on worldly affairs and wasting our blessings on forbidden deeds. Similarly, the right use of Allah's blessings will lead us to Jannah, heaven. How can we do that? By helping the needy with our wealth or spending our wealth on Islamic affairs to help Islam flourish by spending our time in learning the word of Allah and spreading it across. The right use of our resources will determine our destiny in afterlife. Now it's up to us if we choose to abandon the Quran, the Hadith, and life of our Prophet ﷺ, then it is up to us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right path so we are able to conquer heaven for ourselves. In these ayahs, Allah has spoken to the disbelievers of Makkah first and then with all the people who will come to this earth but will follow the footsteps of disbelievers till the end of time. And when the Messenger of Allah tells them that indeed they will be resurrected after death, they reject it and, calls it mag and call it magic. Why the disbelievers of Makkah were not preparing for this exam? Because they thought they will never die and be resurrected. They knew they would die but they, they didn't think they would be resurrected. Hence their ignorance. And they used to ask the Messenger of Allah that if there is any punishment coming from your God, then what is, what is it waiting for? Why is it not coming? Unquestion, unquestionably, the day when the punishment will come to them, there is no way it will be averted from them. And they would be surrounded by what they used to ridicule. Indeed, this is the punishment they were ignorant about and nothing could stop it from coming. And when we send our mercy to the man and later withdraws it, the man becomes ungrateful and hopeless. But if we send our favours to him after his trials, he forgets Allah's mercy and becomes a boastful person. It has been stated in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim that our Prophet wasallam said, I swear upon the one who is in charge of my life that no calamity, trial or sadness befalls a Muslim but that Allah expiates some of his sins because of it. Even though it, it were the prick he receives from a thorn. It has also been reported in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim that Allah's plans are always for the betterment of his believers and a believer is he who thanks Allah for the bounties and blessings he has sent his way and observes patience when struck with afflictions. For such a believer there are only glad tidings. Only those who are patient and do righteous deeds will be forgiven and rewarded greatly. Allah has mentioned about these people in Surah Al-Asr. By time indeed Mankind is in loss. For those who have believed in Allah and did righteous deeds and they also advised each other, follow the truth and observe patience. So, uh, uh, the verses here highlight the weakness inside a man and they also highlight the mindset of those that deny the truth. In these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comforting the Prophet wasallam in regards to those that deny the truth and refute him. Allah is telling the Prophet wasallam not to be sad over such people and to continue preaching the truth and just to teach them of the punishment they will face and to leave them to their ways after that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the Prophet wasallam that his job is to convey the truth to the people. If some people choose to disbelieve, that will be their own undoing. If these people want to live a hedonistic lifestyle, then so be it. Let them live it. They will soon learn in the hereafter. Ultimately, good will come of those to those that are true believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to those that are disbelievers. It is also stated in the ayat in Surah Hud that they are the ones that shall have nothing in the hereafter except fire. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al kareem amma ba'd. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa ma min dabbatin. 
دابتين في الأرض إلا على الله رزقها ويعلم مستقرها ومستودعها كل في كتاب مبين There is no moving creature on earth whose subsistence is not provided by Allah. He knows its living and its resting place and all that is recorded in a clear book. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days, time periods or stages, at the time when his throne was resting on the water, so that he may test you to find out which of you is the best in deeds. Now if you tell them, you shall indeed be raised up after death, the unbelievers would certainly say, there is nothing, this is nothing but sheer magic. And if we put off their punishment till an appointed time, they are sure to ask, what is holding it back? Beware, when the day of that punishment comes, nothing will hold it back from them and they will be completely encircled by that which they are ridiculing. If we let man taste any mercy from us, then withdraw it from him, he becomes uh, despairing and ungrateful. But if we let him taste any favor after ad adversity has aff afflicted him, then he says, all my sorrows are, are gone from me. And he becomes jubilant, jubiliantly arrogant, except those who show patience and do good deeds. They are the ones who will have forgiveness and a great reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those. Then Allah ta'ala says, O Messenger, let it not happen that you omit to expand a portion of what was revealed to you and do not be distressed that they will say, Why was a treasure not bestowed upon him? Or why did no angel accompany him? This has already been talked about in Surah Anam. For you are merely a warner, whereas Allah has control over everything, meaning you have only one responsibility, that is to warn them. Whether they believe or not is known by Allah. Allah alone will decide their end according to their deeds. Do they say he has invented this book himself? Say if that is so, bring ten surahs the like of it of your composition and call upon all the deities you can other than Allah to your help. Meaning with the help of every body that you can invoke for help, invent ayat like this. In many other places it is ayat, but there is, it is 10 surahs. To invent 10 surahs like this and be, and in the Quran one surah has also been talked about. Here one thing is really important to know that Surah Araf, Surah Anam, Surah Yunus, Surah Hud are from the last four years of the stay in Mecca. Meanwhile, after the revelation, Prophet Wasallam stayed in Mecca for 12 years and these ayat were revealed during the last few, four, four years of his stay. Do so if you are truthful. Then if your deities do not respond to your call for help and then feel assured that this book was revealed with the knowledge of Allah and that there is no true God but him, will you then surrender to this truth? Meaning, do you believe it or not? This is being addressed towards the disbelievers and idolaters of Makkah. Those who seek merely the present world and its adornment, we fully recompense them for their work in this world. And they are made to suffer no, no diminu diminution in it concerning what is their due. Meaning the seeker of this world whose efforts, exertion, his body and soul is being used for increment of, increment of this world. Day and night they strive for this. That is why it is being said that for whatever they are striving for, whichever wealth they are putting their effort for, they will get it according to their effort. If they are working hard to get a job, they will get it. But in the hereafter, they will get only fire. And just like this, if someone with humbleness and for the sake of getting favored by Allah makes an effort, he has goodwill for the people and he wants to save them from the wrong ending in the hereafter, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards him more for every good deed 
that he has done both in this world and the hereafter. They are the ones who shall, who shall have nothing in the hereafter except fire. As for those who do not have sincerity in them, have shown off, are hypocrite and self-interest, have self-interest, they want to have the reward of this world itself. Then even if they have done huge and apparent deeds, they will go waste. They will have nothing in the hereafter. Their deeds will be destroyed. Reason, they did not have sincerity and their way was also not correct. And they did not do all that for the sake of Allah. For whatever reason, they might have done that, but it would be given to them in this world. Many times people do good deeds with sincerity and for the sake of Allah. And then they also get worried that am I getting rewarded for these deeds in this world itself and that my reward in hereafter might get wasted. At that time, we must check our intentions to see is it for the sake of self-interest or I want to have money and wealth or I want any kind of praise. If at that time your heart says and tears roll out of your eyes saying that this is what I'm doing, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approves for me, then set your worries aside. Because if now you are getting praised or are getting respected for your work, then this is the reward you're getting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must say this dua whenever someone is pray praising us. Taqabbalahu minna wa minkum salihul amal. Salihul amal. There they shall come to know that their deeds in the world have come to nothing and that whatever they have done is absolutely useless. Meaning whatever they have done will have no weight, nothing will be accepted. Can it happen that he who takes his stand on clear evidence from his Lord, meaning he was of sound nature, was a pious person, subsequently followed by a witness for him in his support, meaning Torah was the witness of Prophet ﷺ. It is being told now and prior to the book of Moses was revealed as a guide and mercy. Would even he deny the truth in the manner of those who adore the life of this world? Rather such men are bound to believe in it. Here, witness is, is, uh, witness is taken in the meaning of the Quran and Prophet Sallallahu Two people are being compared here. One is the one who was of sound nature, believing in Torah. And if you take a look at that at, at, the, at the later time, believed in Injil. Then the Quran came, Prophet Sallallahu came. Then he also believed in them both. On the other hand, hand is the one who refuses the truth. It is being said that, that the end of both of them cannot be the same. They cannot be the same when their end is taken into consideration. The fire shall be the promised resort of the groups that disbelieve. Meaning the group from the people of book which refused to believe in Prophet Sallallahu who refused the Quran which was revealed on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is being said that the end of those will be the hellfire. So be in no doubt about it, for this indeed is the truth from your Lord, although most people do not believe it. And who is a greater wrongdoer than he who invents a lie against Allah, such men will be set forth before their Lord and witness will, witnesses will say, meaning angels, noble prophets and, and the parts of the body will also testify against them. These are the ones who lied against their Lord. Allah's curse be upon the wrongdoers.
upon those who bar people from the way of Allah and seek in it crookedness, meaning they make it look crooked, find faults with it, they will not believe in it and, and will stop others from believing in it. It is narrated in Bukhari and Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives period of grace to the wrongdoers. He does not hold them accountable for their sins immediately. But when he does, he does not leave them. Their punishment will come, will keep getting prolonged, the grace period that they were in. In that time, they do many, many sins and they get stubborn and convinced of their sins because they had not done any work with the powers given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning Allah gave them powers, ability, gave them ears, gave them eyes, gave them limbs and other organs. But they turned a deaf ear towards the truth. They did not make their eyes subservient to the truth. Before entering the hellfire, they will say, they themselves will accept and we, when had we listened to the truth and we had any wisdom, then today we would not be from the hellfire people and and disbelieve in the hereafter. Mean, meaning, they will have this kind of end because they never believed in the hereafter. They did not do anything for the hereafter. Then Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ لَمْ يَكُونُوا مُعْجِزِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَكَانَ لَهُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءِ يُضَاعَثُوا لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ مَا كَانُوا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ يَسْتَطِيعُونَ السَّمْعَ وَمَا كَانُوا يُبْسِرُونَ They had no power to frustrate Allah's design in the, in the earth. Meaning, when punishment came to them, when Allah sees them, then they were not able to get out of it. Nor could they overpower Allah. Nor could they take revenge. Nor could they make anyone helpless. Nor did they have any protectors against Allah. They were not even in the condition to call someone for help. Their chastisement will be doubled. Sorry, their chastisement will be doubled. They themselves went astray and made others go astray. They were unable to hear, nor could they see, meaning their wisdom and understanding was not there. They caused utter loss to themselves, meaning they themselves became deficit and all that they had invented failed them. Meanwhile, they never believed in monotheism, never believed in one Allah. They, nor did they have any protectors against Allah. They were not even in the condition to call someone for help. They the ch chastisement will be doubled. They themselves will went astray and made others go astray. They were unable to hear, nor could they see, meaning their wisdom and understanding was not there. They caused utter loss to themselves, meaning them, they themselves became deficit and all that they, they had invented failed them, meaning they, they never believed in monotheism, never believed in one Allah, they, them, they uh, uh, never believed in, in one Allah. They themselves invent many gods, which was false, and they never understood the purpose of their lives, could not identify it because they never got the knowledge about Allah, and they never listened to their prophet, nor they, nor they acted upon the book or the sharia that they got. The gods they had invented will not be there on the day of judgment. Doubtlessly, they shall be the greatest losers in the hereafter, meaning this is the biggest loss. As for those who believed and acted, acted righteously and dedicated themselves totally to their Lord, they are the people of paradise and they shall abide there forever. Both of these groups, that is people of faith and the disbelievers. The example of the two parties is that one is blind and deaf and the other capable of seeing and hearing. Can the, can the two be equal? Will you then not heed? Can they be similar? It is being said that exactly like this, the people of faith and the disbelievers cannot be the same. Both of them have different belief, beliefs, have different deeds. And this is why both of them will have different ends. Now, six prophets are being talked about previous days are being reminded, meaning those days will be talked about when torment came upon the disobedient nations of these prophets and we will we will be taught a lesson and we will be told to rectify ourselves 
as such and such torments befell their nations because they used to do these kind of deeds. Check yourselves whether you would also do them because those kinds of torments can befall upon you also. Here, first of all, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. Then Hazrat Hud alayhi salam. Then Hazrat Sali alayhi salam. And then Hazrat Lut alayhi salam. Then Hazrat Shuaib alayhi salam. And then Hazrat Musa alayhi salam will be talked about. These noble prophets invited their nation towards monotheism. While studying the ayat, we will learn what kind of behavior did the nations adopt towards them. What kind of sins did they keep on doing and then what kind of torments they fell upon them. Meanwhile, the kind of torment they received was according to the sins they did. Nuh salam started preaching over the age of 50 years and preached till the age of 900 years. But who are the ones who believed? Only a handful of young people. Such were the circumstances when we sent uh, forth Nu to his people. He said, I have been sent to you to warn you plainly that you may worship none but Allah or else I fear for you the chastisement of a grievous day. The noblest among Nu's own people who had refused to follow him responded, We merely consider you a human being like ourselves. Nor do we find among those who follow you except the lowliest of our folk, meaning the poor, the needy, the less, the people of less status. They are the ones who believe in you. The men who follow you without any proper reason, we see nothing in you to suggest that you are any better than us, meaning we do not see any goodness in you. You neither have any wealth nor any respect. Rather, we believe you to be a liar. وَآتَانِي رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِهِ فَعُمِّيَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنُلْزِمُكُمُوهَا وَأَنْتُمْ لَهَا كَارِهُونَ Nuhr alayhi salam replied, O oh my brothers, think for a moment. Tell me, if I am guided by clear proofs for my Lord, and if I have a blameless and true personality, and my Lord bestowed me with a special mercy and blessing of Prophet, Prophethood. You are still unable to see these facts and you close your eyes to it. When you hate this message so strongly, how can you be compelled to believe by sheer force? It's worth noting that the people of Nu alayhi salam were just like the disbelieving Quraysh of Makkah. In their resistance to the truth, the Quraysh taunted the Holy Prophet wasallam in the same way for not being wealthy, for not being powerful and for not having angels with him. Nuh salam said, O oh my people, I don't ask you for any monetary reward. My, my reward is only with Allah. And I'm not going to push away these weak and poor people who believe in my message. Allah knows their true worth and value. When you meet your Lord, you will learn how precious these poor people are in the eyes of Allah and how great is their dignity and honor. I can see that you, on the other hand, are being ignorant and stubborn. And O oh, my people, who will save me from the anger of Allah if I push them away? You say they are lowly and mean and not worthy of sitting with you. The chiefs of Makkah objected in the same way to the presence of slaves, the poor and weak Muslims around the Holy Prophet This was meant to show the Holy Prophet that other prophets before him also had to face similar complaints and excuses. Nuh salam had to face this situation for 900 years. Nuh salam said, I don't claim that I own treasures and I don't know what is unseen. I do not say I am an angel. Why can you not understand that I cannot say about these poor believers that Allah will not give them a good reward? You consider them worthless and lowly, but Allah is aware of the pure belief in their hearts. If they have not been given wealth, they have, they have been blessed in many other ways. If I push them away, I should be a wrongdoer.
Ba'ina bina da iruna in contamina sodiki. They said, oh no, you have disputed with us and you have disputed a lot. Stop further arguments and now bring upon us the punishment you keep threatening to bring if you are really truthful. Nuh salam said, if Allah wills, he will bring the torment and punishment upon you. Then you will not be able to stop it or escape from it. You will not be able to save yourselves. Even if I wish to help you, I will not be able to do anything for you either. My advice will not benefit you even if I wish to advise you when it is the will of Allah to keep you astray. You yourself have no will or desire to adopt the path of righteousness. How can you be given the right guidance when you don't want it? Your creator is Allah and only to Allah will you, you, will you return. While the story of Noah alayhi salam was being revealed, the Quraysh came up with another new objection. They accused the Holy Prophet wasallam of fabricating it all by himself. أَمْ يَكُولُونَ افْتَرَاهُ قُلْ إِنْ افْتَرَيْتُهُ فَعَلَيَّ إِجْرَانِي وَأَنَا بَرِيءٌ مِمَّا تُجْرِمُونَ Say if I have fabricated, it is my crime, it is upon me. And if you have fabricated this blame upon me, I am free from these crimes which you commit. I have done my duty and conveyed the message to you. Finally, it was revealed to Nuh alayhi salam that none of the people will believe except those who have already believed. Do not be sad for what they used to do. Allah is the knower of the unseen. He knew that they were not going to accept the message of his prophet. Anymore, Allah ordered Nuh salam to begin constructing a boat under his supervision and instructions. And he also told Nuh salam, do not ask for any safety for the wrongdoers. They are all surely to be drowned. Innahum mu'raqoon. As Nuh salam was constructing the boat, whenever the leaders of the people passed by him, they laughed at him. He is building a boat on dry land and there is no sign of water anywhere near Nuh salam answered, if you laugh at us, we laugh at you just like you laughed at us. Since the punishment of the flood was very near and they were unaware of it. The people continued to taunt Nuh salam and said that, that at first Nuh salam used to talk only and we called him a liar. Now he is building a boat without any water in sight. We think he has gone mad now. When finally Allah's command arrived for the doom and punishment to begin, the water began gushing out from the earth. Starting from the tanur or oven, rain poured heavily from the skies. There was water everywhere. Nuh was commanded by Allah to take along one pair of each animal and his believing family members along with all other believers who were very few indeed. The rest were to be left behind as their fate had already been decided by their disbelief. The boat set a sail by the command of Allah. Its starting and stopping were all by his command. This is also the dua, du, the dua for sea travelers. The boat was surrounded by waves like mountains. Noah salam called out to his son, Yam, who was swimming in the water. Oh, my son, climb into the boat and don't join the disbelievers. The son replied, I shall take protection on the mountains and I will be safe. Noah salam was overwhelmed by fatherly love for his son. But the son did not listen to him even then and relied on his own strength. Nuh said, Today no one can save himself from the decree of Allah except by Allah's mercy only. A wave of water came between them and the son was drowned. Except for the people and the animals on the boat, all the disbelievers drowned in the flood. Even the tallest trees on the mountains came under the waters. The boat travelled several days until finally Allah commanded the earth to swallow up all its water and the sky to stop raining. The water receded and the punishment of Allah came to an end. The boat stopped on the mountain named Judy, 
which is near the Turkish border with Russia and the Armenian mountain ranges. It was said, be away with the wrongdoers. Salam called out to his Lord, O oh my Lord, my son is from my family, and indeed your promise is just and true, and you are the most just among the just. Allah said, O oh no, surely he is not from your family. Indeed his deeds are not righteous. Do not ask of me that of which you have no knowledge. There were very strict words, and Nuh Salam immediately said, O oh my Creator, I seek, re seek refuge with you for asking you that of which I have no knowledge. And unless you, unless you forgive me and have mercy upon me, I will indeed be one of the losers. Anu alayhi salam waited in the boat for the next command of Allah. After a few days, the land became dry and Allah commanded, O Nu, disembark from the boat with peace and blessings from us upon you and the believers with you. However, there will be, where there will also be some descendants from these groups to whom we will, we will give enjoyable worldly life, but we will punish them severely in the hereafter. These are very strict words that were said to Hazrat Nuh salam. And he immediately said, O oh my Lord, I seek your refuge from asking that of which I have no knowledge. And if you didn't forgive me and have mercy on me, then I will surely be destroyed. When the ark rested in Mount Judy, Hazrat Nuh salam was waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then commanded and said, O oh Nuh, disembark in security from us. And we send you, your followers, glad tidings and blessings. It has been believed that we are the descendants of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam's son Yafis. Sam in Ham. And there are some nations whom we will grant some time to come to the right path. But if they won't, then they will face painful punishment from us. Here Allah is talking about the nation of Hud salam, and the nation of Salih alayhi salam. O Muhammad salam, this news is from the unseen which neither you nor your people have known before. So be patient indeed. The best outcome is for the righteous. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, to observe patience when the disbelievers tease him. Hud alayhi salam, was sent to the nation of Ad as their prophet. And to Ad, we sent their brother Hud. He said, Oh, my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. You are not but inventors of falsehood. Oh, my people, I do not ask you for any reward. My reward is only from the one who created me. Then will you not reason? Oh, my people, ask forgiveness of your Lord and then repent to him. He will send rain from the sky upon you in showers and increase you in strength and will add more strength to your existing strength and do not turn away being criminals. Here the beauty and power of repentance is being mentioned that how if a soul repents to Allah with a sincere heart, Allah will open doors of blessings for him in form of cure to any of his sickness. He will send rain that will end any drought and increase him in his wealth. The people of Ard were farmers and were struck with severe drought for the past three years. Therefore, they were being advised to repent to Allah and leave polytheism so that Allah will send rain and end the three-year-long famine. They replied, O Hud, you have not brought us clear evidence and we are not ones to leave our gods on your saying, nor are we believers in you. This ayah was revealed to Muhammad wasallam in the same era when he was being teased by disbelie disbelievers of Makkah. They were demanding to see the miracles from the prophets and refused to stop worshipping their idols. Then the people of Ard said that we think you have been possessed by our gods with some evil. The same thing was being said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Since you are stopping us from worshipping our gods, we will send their wrath upon you. Hud alayhi said, indeed, I call Allah to witness and witness yourselves. 
that I am free from whatever you associate with Allah other than him. So plot against me altogether, then do not give me respite. Indeed, I have relied upon Allah, my Lord and your Lord. There is no creature but that he holds his forelock. Allah knows what our heart desires. He knows all our intentions and fears. He is the owner of our destiny. Therefore, Allah already knew these people will continue following the wrong path and will never return to him. Now, Hud is saying, Indeed, my Lord is on a path that is straight. This means Allah will be pleased with those who will follow the, uh, the right path and obey him. But if they turn away, say, I have already conveyed that which I was sent to you. My Lord will give succession to people other than you and you will not harm him at all. By this, Wud meant that when these disbelievers will die and face Allah's dreadful punishment, then they will not be able to save themselves. Indeed, my Lord is the guardian of all things. We have to obey Allah and worship only Allah. He is the one and only one worthy of our worship. And if we start disobeying Allah from the fear of disple displeasing humans, then it clearly means we are more afraid from the people around us than Allah. And it is impossible to fear both at the same time. When a heart is filled with fear of Allah, the fear of people immediately dies out. And a heart empty of fear of Allah is empty with belief on, on Allah as well. And when our command came, we saved who? And those who believed with him by mercy from us. And we saved them from a harsh punishment. And, and that was Ad who rejected the signs from their Lord and disobeyed his messengers and followed the orders of every obstinate tyrant. At, least, at last, they were cursed in this world and the hereafter. Listen, ah, they disbelieved their Lord. And they were therefore followed in this world with a curse and as well on the day of resurrection. Unquestionably, Ad denied their Lord, then away with Ad, the people of Hud. Now the story of Sali is being mentioned here. He was also mentioned earlier in Surah Al-Araf. It is a big loss for anyone who doesn't realize the true meaning of their existence and spend their lives amiss. People of Thamud were also in a similar state. They were already astray from the commands of Allah and were engaged in worshipping the idols. They never believed the Prophet Salih or any of his messages. They demanded from, the, from him the miracle of the she-camel. They rejected the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were always indulged in arguing and disobeying Salih Therefore, the end they faced was harsh punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to Thamud, we sent their brother, brother Saleh. He said, O oh, my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. He has produced you from the earth and settled you in it. So ask forgiveness of him and then repent to him. Indeed, my Lord is near and responsive. The lesson given here for those who think for some reason their prayers are not being answered, they are advised to repent sincerely to Allah and recite the Astaghfar religiously. May Allah guide us to repent to him sincerely. Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi used to recite istighfar at least 70 to 100 times daily. They said, O oh, Saleh, you were among us a man of promise before this. We were very much impressed with your personality, your sincerity and good behavior. We had huge hopes for you. Do you forbid us to worship what our fathers worshipped? Some things was said to have same things was said to Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu by the disbelievers of Makkah. And indeed, we are about that to which you invite us in disquieting doubt. He said, Oh my people, have you considered if I should be upon clear evidence from my Lord and he has given me mercy for himself? Who would protect me from Allah if I disobeyed him? So you would not increase me except in loss. And oh my people, this is the she-camel. She is to you a sign. So let her feed upon Allah's earth and do not touch her with harm or you will be taken by impending punishment. 
Sali alayhi salam said, you have asked for this miraculous camel. You asked for a miracle yourselves. Now leave her free to graze and roam upon in the land. Do not touch her with evil intent. Otherwise, it won't be long before the punishment of Allah comes upon you. But the people of Sali alayhi salam hamstrung the camel and killed her. Sali alayhi salam warned the people to wait three days in their homes after which the promised punishment would come and there was no way to avert it. Then when our command came to pass, we saved Sali and those who shared his, his faith through our special mercy from the disgrace of that day. Truly your Lord is all strong, almighty. Thus the believers were saved from the punishment by Allah and suffered no harm. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the blast overtook those who were wanting to do harm and they lay lifeless in their homes as though they had never lived there before. Oh, verily, the Thamud denied their Lord. Oh, the Thamud are destroyed. They were pushed far away from the mercy of their Lord. Their very existence was erased from pages of destiny and none, none was left to bear, uh, and none was, and none was left to bear their name. Next, the incident of Ibrahim and his guests is being narrated. Ibrahim alayhi salam and his guests is being narrated. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى بِالْبُشْرَى قَالُوا سَلَامًا قَالَ سَلَامٌ فَمَا لَبِثَ أَنْ جَاءَ بِعِجْلٍ حَنِيذٍ Indeed, our messengers came to Ibrahim alayhi salam wearing glad tidings. They greeted him with peace and Ibrahim answered back to them with peace and hurriedly brought to them a roasted calf. When he perceived that the hands could not reach it, he mistrusted them and felt afraid of them. They said, do not be afraid. We have been sent to the people of Lut. Ibrahim a.s. was very hospitable to his guests always. But when he saw that these people did not touch the food, he became worried and felt suspicious of them, feeling fear in his heart. In those days, it was a custom that if someone had hostile intentions towards someone else, then he would not eat anything from that home. Eating their food would prevent one from killing them afterwards. Then Allah Ta'ala says, Ibrahim's wife was standing by and on hearing this she laughed. We gave the good news of the birth of Ishaq and after Ishaq of Yaqub. Yaqub. There are many options, oh, there are many opinions about why she laughed. It is said that she was scored to see angels in human form and feared they had come with some punishment. It is said that she was scared to see angels in human form and feared they had come with some punishment. But when Abraham questioned them and learned they had come with no intention of harming their home, she smiled with relief. Ibn Kasir's opinion is that when she saw them refusing all the efforts of Ibrahim salam to make them eat she laughed at the guest's strange behavior. Another reason given is that she laughed with happiness on learning the good news of a child being born to her. We must bear in mind that at this point, Ismail has, has already been born to Hajar alayhi And both mother and son have been sent to Makkah and left alone in the barren valley at the command of Allah by Ibrahim alayhi salam. So the news of a son and a grandson was a source of joy to her. Sarah was Ibrahim salam's first wife and she was from a very good family. Although Hajra was also no ordinary slave girl, she was a noble princess hand, handed over to Ibrahim salam to serve him. Sarah had asked Ibrahim salam to marry her as she herself was childless. When Ishaq salam was born, Sarah salam was 90 and Ibrahim alayhi salam was 100 years old. Then Allah Ta'ala says, Woe is me, shall I bear a child now that I am an old woman and my husband is well advanced in years? Surely this is strange. Then the angel said, Do you wonder at Allah's decree, Allah's mercy and his blessings be upon you? Oh, 
people of the house, surely he is praiseworthy and glorious. Bibi Sara is being addressed as people of the house, meaning that she is the family of Ibrahim a.s. Then Allah Ta'ala says, when the fear and worry of Ibrahim subsided and his heart was happy with the news of a son, he began to argue with us about the people of Lut. Details of his argument with the angels are found in the Torah. He asked the angels if even 50 people in a settlement are believers. Are you still going to bring punishment upon that settlement? They replied, no. Then Ibrahim salam asked the same question about 40 believers going on in the same way till he reached the figure of five. And the angel still said that even if five are on the right path, we will never bring punishment upon them. Sadly, in the case of Lut salam, there were not even five who were on the right path. Only Lut salam, and his two daughters were believers. Even his own wife was not with him. فَلَمَّا ذَهَبَا عَنْ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الرُّوحُ وَجَاءَتْهُ الْبُشْرَى وَيُجَادِلُنَا فِي قَوْمِ لُوْتٍ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَحَلِيمٌ أَوَّاهُمْ مُنِيبٌ Surely, Ibrahim was forbearing, tender-hearted and often returning to Allah. Thereupon, our angel said to him, O Ibrahim, this is from this. For indeed your Lord's command has come, and a chastisement which can not be averted is about to befall them. This meant, this was meant to convince Ibrahim a.s. that no one, not even you, can prevent the punishment from befalling them. And when our messengers came to Lut, he was perturbed by their coming and felt troubled on their account and said, This is a distressing day. وَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُولُنَا لُوتًا سِيءَ بِهِمْ وَضَاقَ بِهِمْ ذَرْعًا وَقَالَ هَذَا يَوْمٌ يَوْمٌ عَصِيبٌ Lut was distressed because these guests were good-looking, handsome young men and he could not think of any way to stop the evil intentions of the people for them. The news of Lut's handsome guests was spread among the people. The people came rushing towards his house as even before this they used to commit unnatural and evil deeds. Lord Bulut said, My people here are my daughters. They are pure of you, have fear of Allah and do not disgrace me concerning my guests. Is there not even one right-minded person among you? They replied, Surely you want, uh, you already know that we have nothing to do with your daughters. You also know full well what we want. That is, you know why we have come running for these young men. Hazrat Lut said, would, would that I had the strength to set you straight or could seek refuge in some powerful support? As we all are aware that Lut salam, had migrated to this settlement with his cousin Ibrahim salam. Therefore, he had no extended tribe or family among these people and had no powerful connections among them. So when he saw that nothing could prevent these people from their evil intentions, the thoughts came to him that perhaps if he had some large family group, he could draw strength from them and also stop these people from evil designs. In Bukhari, the book of Hadith, al -Ambiya, it is related that the Prophet wasallam said, Allah have mercy on Ruth alayhi salam that he wanted the support of powerful people. This leads onwards to the fact that after this, when Allah sent a messenger, he was sent among his own nation and, and people. In this way, the messenger could at least gain support and power from his own tribe. At all times, Lut was in the strongest protection of Allah. The momentary lapse in the heat of the moment is only to emphasize how helpless he felt in the face of the people's madness. Hazrat Lut's nation had warned him time and again not to have any guests staying in his house. They wanted to host each and every visitor in order to fulfill their evil intentions. 
The angels in the form of handsome young men had been secretly brought to this house by Lut alayhi salam in order to protect them. But his wife had gone and told their arrival to all the people. This also prompted Lut alayhi salam to wish for a strong support and help. Then Allah Ta'ala says, The angel said, O Lut, we are indeed messengers of your Lord and your people will not be able to hurt you in any way. So depart with your family in the last part of the night and let no one turn it around except your wife. She will stay behind for what will befall them shall also befall her. They promised ah shall come in the morning. Is not the morning near? That is to say they were told to leave immediately. As mentioned before, the sympathies of Hazrat Lut's wife were with the people. This is why she turned around to look back and in this way she was also caught in their punishment. من سجيل مندود مندود And when our command came to pass, we turned the town upside down and rained on it stones of baked clay one after the other. It is said that there was a fearful volcanic explosion and a severe earthquake turned the houses upside down. Sharp stones of baked clay rained down from the sky. Each stone was marked with the name of the person it was meant to hit. Then Allah Ta'ala says, marked from your Lord and punishment is never far from wrongdoers. That is to say that even now all who indulge in such evil acts can expect a similar punishment. The punishment of evil people can continue to be sent down upon them till the day of judgment and Allah is well aware of each wrongdoer's identity. And then Allah Ta'ala says unto the people of Madian, we sent your, their brother Shuaib. He said, My people, serve Allah. You have no God other than him, and do not diminish the measure and weight. Indeed, I see you are proposing, I, I see you are prospering now, but I fear for you the punishment of an all encompassing day in the future. بقية الله خير لكم إن كنتم مؤمنين وما أنا عليكم بحفيد. The gains that Allah lets you retain are better for you if you indeed believe. In any case, I have not been appointed a keeper over you. That is, there is no need to fear me. I am not a guard over you. The duty of a prophet is only to correct evil doing among the people. He gives da'wah or tawheed. And oneness of Allah. What is the need to be afraid of me? I am not a protector. The work of a prophet is to reform people, invite people towards monotheism, advise them whatever evils are in, in, in the society, to advise people about those evils. For example, these people, they used to cheat in their weights. They used to rob people, they used to deprive people of their rights. Therefore, it is the duty of a prophet to reform nation and its people. It certainly is not the duty of a prophet to scare people. And also not instead of making them fearful of Allah, he makes them be scared of himself and gets his work done. Because if people would not get fearful of Allah and be scared of the prophet, and because of his fear they do the work that he instructs them to do, then that work will not be pure, will not be out of sincerity, will not be for the sake of Allah, and then it will not be accepted. It is very important that whatever work that uh, you do should, should not be out of fear of the people, it should be done out of the fear of Allah, and should be done with sincerity, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's approval, and also only, by the way, Allah has shown us that those deeds will be accepted that are do done only for him. Qalu, ya shu'aibu, as-salatuka ta'muruka an 
نترك ما يعبد آباؤنا أو أن نفعل في أموالنا ما نشاء إنك لا إنك لا أنت الحليم الرشيد. They replied, O Shuaib, does your prayer enjoin upon you that we should forsake the deities whom our forefathers worshipped, or that we should give up using our wealth as we please? Meaning, should we give up the worship of the deities that our forefathers did only because you say so? Should we make our ancestors angry? It will be very rude. And meaning, you want to use our wealth on your terms? You want us to use our wealth on your terms? It is our wealth and we will do whatever we like. Meaning, your prayer and your religion is teaching you that we should leave benefiting ourselves, sh should leave our prayer. Because Shoaib said that the savings given by Allah are better for you if you are doing any sort of trade or business, then take a legitimate price. Not like selling bad goods by concealing them or adulterating things. And the earnings from these acts will be forbidden to you. On this they are saying that should we leave our benefits because you say so? Do you fancy that you and only you are forbearing and right, that rightly directed? Meaning, do you really think that you are very pious and God-fearing? Even during these times, people say, you pray regularly and these are your manners. Is this what your prayer taught you? Shoaib said, my people, what do you think? If I stand on clear evidence from my Lord, we have already talked about this. I was there right in front of you. I was told the truth and was trustworthy was of sound nature and he has also provided me a handsome provision from himself meaning the knowledge of revelation and and gave me guidance should i be ungrateful to him and share your error and inequity or, or nor do i desire to act contrary to what i admonish you meaning even when i am also acting upon the instructions that i'm giving you I am not asking you to do things which I myself am not acting upon and only telling you all to do so. I desire nothing but to set things right as far as I can. M my remuneration is only with Allah. In Him have I put my trust and to Him do I always return. And to Him do I always turn. My people, let not your opposition to me lead you to guilt that would bring upon you the chastisement that struck earlier the people of Noah and the people of Hud and the people of Saleh and the land of the people of Lut is not far from you. Meaning they, people of Lut, had faced the divine torment a little earlier and you might also face the divine torment the reason might also be, if you go beyond in your enmity with me, meaning you should not refuse a person who is inviting you towards religion because of your personal enmity. Seek the forgiveness of your Lord and turn to him in repentance. Surely my Lord is ever merciful, most loving. Here repentance means trying to stay away from sins and not to do so next time and turn towards Allah. Make a strong relation with Allah. Believe in one God and do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to do. Then Allah ta'ala says, they say, O Shoaib, who do not, we do not understand much of what you say. Indeed, we see, see you weak in our midst. Were it not for your kinsmen, we would surely have stoned you for you have no strength to overpower us. These ayat are being revealed according to the conditions faced by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Only those parts from the lives of the previous prophets were being told that were in front of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even our Prophet had the protection of his kinsman Banu Hashim, exactly like Shuaib alaihi wasallam was also pr protected by his kinsman. Then Allah Taala saved Shuaib said, "My people are my kinsmen." mightier with you than Allah? Are my kinsmen mightier than you, 
then Allah, my team, sorry. Shoaib said, my people are my kinsmen, mightier with you than Allah. That you hold the kinsman in awe while you cast Allah behind your back. Meaning my kinsmen, kinsmen are mightier to you than Allah. So much so that you are afraid of them and you are not afraid of Allah. Surely my Lord encompasses all what you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can catch upon you anytime. So be afraid of him. Then Allah Ta'ala says, my people, go on working according to your way and I will keep working according to mine. That is, if you do not want to believe and want to go against me in every manner possible, want to scheme against me, do it. I am on the path of monotheism. I will keep doing my work, enjoying what is good and approved and forbid what is evil and disapproved. Soon you will come to know who will be afflicted by, by a humiliating chastisement and who is proved a liar and watch. I shall also watch with you. Then Allah Ta'ala says, And when our command came to pass, we delivered Shoaib and those who shared his faith through our mercy and the blast seized those who were engaged in wrongdoing. So they lay lifeless in their homes. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ka'allam yagnaw fiha ala bu'dal li madiyana kama ba'idat thamud. And they life, lay lifeless in their homes as though they had never been dwelt in them before. Lo, away with the people of Madian, even as the Thamud were done away with. A huge blast came and they were dead after that. And after that, there was not a single person who knew about them. Every single person was killed. In the next ayah, Allah Ta'ala says, And indeed, we sent Moses with our signs and with a clear authority. To Pharaoh and his nobles, that they obeyed the command of Pharaoh, even though Pharaoh's command was not rightly directed. He shall not stand at the head of his people on the day of resurrection, meaning that his caravan will be going towards the fire of hell and he will be leading the people who were following him and will bring down them down and will bring them down to the fire. What a wretched destination to be led to. It's the worst place to tread on. Then Allah says, They were pursued by a curse in this world and so will they be on the day of resurrection. What an evil reward will they receive? They were deprived of the mercy of Allah in this world and they were killed and were cursed. Now Allah Dalla says that is an account of some two this is uh, that is an account of some two. Some towns which we recount you, of them some are still standing and some have been mown down. Meaning the nation of Ad and Samud, which no longer exist, have reached their end. We did not wrong them, it is rather they who wrong themselves. That is, by not believing, doing shirk, by becoming the enemies of the noble prophets, by doing going against them, by scheming against them. And when the command of your Lord came to pass, the gods besides Allah, whom they had called upon, did not avail them in the least. They added nothing to them except ruin. That is, they came upon their end because of their false gods. They used to think that they will protect them from their torment, will be their supporter in the hereafter. But instead of protecting them, they became the reason for their torment. In, in these ayat, uh, you have studied about the nation of Shu'ayb and the nation of Lut About the nation of Shu'ayb is that one shriek killed them in Surah Al-Araf. It is written that they were killed because of an earthquake. In Surah Shura it is written 
that clouds of torment surrounded them like a canopy. Therefore, they faced all these torments at the same time. Nowadays, we are also getting involved in the same diseases as those of the nation of Shoaib salam and Lut salam, getting involved in the same sins. Therefore, I pray a lot that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectifies our nation and forgives them and protects them from their sins and takes us from the clutches of the sins. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Then Allah ta'ala says, such is the seizing of your Lord, that when he does seize the towns immersed in wrongdoing, his seizing is painful and terrible. Surely, in that is a sign for him who fears the chastisement of the hereafter. There will be a day when all men shall be mustered together. That will be a day when whatever happens shall be witnessed by all. Nor shall we withhold it except till an appointed time. Here, what is meant to say is that the day of Kayama is very nearby. Its time to uh, its time is fixed, and upon its fixed time, it will come. It has its time fixed. It certainly is not that it will not come. It surely will come, but at the appointed time. And when the appointed day comes, no one shall ever even dare to speak, meaning that no one will be able to talk except by the leave of Allah. That is, only Allah wills, only who Allah wills will be able to talk. Then some will be declared wretched, others blessed. Wretched will be those who will be going towards hellfire and blessed those who will be going to paradise. It is narrated in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim that on the day only the prophets will say and their speech will be, O oh Allah, forgive us safe, forgive us safety. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, give us safety. O oh Allah, give us safety. On the ground of resurrection, there will be many bad people and many pious people. As for the wretched, they shall be in the fire, and in they shall sigh and groan. They shall abide in it as long as the heavens and the earth endure. That is, as, as for as long as there will be hell, there will be skies and earth. Unless your Lord lay, lay, may will otherwise, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the authority that he may take them out whenever he wants. Surely your Lord does whatever he wills. And as for those who are blessed, they shall abide in the garden as long as the heavens and the earth endure, unless your Lord may will otherwise, they shall enjoy an unceasing gift. It is narrated in Muslim and Bukhari that death, death will be brought in the shape of a, a chitkabara ram, that the, the ram will ha will have black spots on it, and then it will be slaughtered, and then we, and then will be told people will be told that people of paradise, you will live forever, and death will not approach you, and oh people of hell, you will live in hell for eternity. Have no doubt about what they worship, for they worship what their fathers worshipped before. It is not that Prophet ﷺ was in any doubt about the gods they used to worship. It's just that by addressing him, people till the last day are being addressed. And yet we shall grant them their due portion in full, diminishing of it nothing. And we certainly gave Moses the book before, and the, there, there arose dis disagreements about it, even as there are disagreements now about the, book, about the book revealed to you, had it not been for a decree that had already gone forth from your Lord, the matter would have long been decided between them. It is being said that had it not been decided previously, then the matter between the opposers would have been resolved long back. Indeed, they are in a disquieting doubt about it. Surely, your Lord will recompense the full 
to the full for their deeds, for indeed he is well aware of all, of all what they do. Most of the people have this complaint that the people, those who don't have belief, they are enjoying a lot. They don't even utter Allah's name. When they have a look at any rich man, they don't pray, don't fast, don't do anything but run after this world. When we compare them with, for example, any scholar, that then he will be spending his life mostly in poverty and simplicity. The only reason of his life would be to worship Allah alone and to invite people towards Allah. Then why should there be? Then why should there be this difference that the one who is on the path of Tawheed is doing his service towards the religion? He is spending his life in poverty. And for that one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given any ability and understanding because they don't want to have any guidance. He's enjoying. The essence of this surah lies in this last truku. And this restless, restlessness is being done with and it is being told that in this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given freedom, option, uh, and their own accord to decide. Everyone has both ways, the path of guidance, the path of misguidance. Now it is in his hands whichever way he wants to choose. May he do whatever he wa wants. Allah Ta'ala has given him that freedom of, freedom of choice. Deeds that will take him to paradise or deeds that will take him to hell. But the decision will be taken according to the deeds that he has done. As for the materialistic things, to gain them alone is not success but is deceit. The real success is that man should prepare for hereafter, should understand the purpose of his life and leave this world after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is satisfied with him. And when a mu'min spends his life in simplicity, then he remains satisfied. He has more <clears throat> reliance and hope on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he spends a life of satisfaction and peace. We cannot find peace in the money and wealth, but we find peace in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In his proximity, in trusting in Allah's plan, in doing the things in accordance to Allah's wish, does this man truly find the taste of life? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless, bless us all with true hidayat. So remain, O Muhammad, you and those who have returned with you to the fold of faith and obedience from unbelief and rebellion, remain steadfast. Meaning, they were disbelievers before, now they have become Muslims. And adhering to the straight path as you were commanded, meaning now they should remain steadfast, steadfast on this path of guidance and do not exceed the limits of service to Allah. Meanwhile, they should neither ask for any early torment, nor should they be impatient, for certainly he is aware of all what you do, meaning Allah is seeing everything, and do not incline towards the wrongdoers. Let the fire might seize you, lest the fire might seize you. Meaning because of your relationship or friendship towards them, you should not get inclined towards them. And you will have none as your protector against Allah. And then you will not be helped from anywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And establish the prayer at the end, two ends of the day and in the first hours of the night. Meaning, at this time, five daily prayers were not made obligatory. They became obligatory after the night of Miraj in the twelfth year of Makkah. Five prayers were not obligatory till then. They were only the prayers were only in the morning and evening, and uh, and upon Muhammad Sallam the night prayer, the Hajj was obligatory. Indeed, the good deeds drive away the evil deeds. Meaning, if a person had done anything wrong, 
unmindful of what of it than a good deed that he does wipes it away. This is a reminder to those who are mindful of Allah. Waspir fa in Allah la yuvi u ajr al and be patient, for indeed Allah never lets the reward of those who do good go to waste. Why were they not out of the generations that passed away before you righteous men? Meaning upon whom torments came down? Why were they not such benefactors? Who would forbid others from causing corruption on the earth? And if such were there, they were only a few whom we had saved from those generations, or else the wrongdoers kept pushing the ease and comfort which had been conferred upon them, meaning they were always after the comfort of this world. Their time, their wealth, their competence was always used for this, but when they died, they left behind all this, thus losing themselves in sinfulness. And your Lord is not such as such as would wrongfully destroy human habitations, while their inhabitants are righteous, meaning it is very important to be mindful of the sins we might have done unlo unknowingly in the past. And then the next thing is that there must all that that we must always encourage others to do good deeds and stop them from doing wrong deeds. He must enjoin what is good and approve and forbid what is evil and, and disapproved. For, a, for as long as we are in the process of rectifying others, then we will not have to face torment, for our previous sins will be wiped. Had your Lord so willed, he would have surely uh, made mankind one community, meaning everyone would have been on the path of monotheism. But as things stand, now they will not eat, cease to differ among themselves and to follow erroneous ways, meaning they will always be in disagreement. Except for those whom your Lord has mercy, and it is for those ex exercise of freedom of choice that he has created them, meaning man would never have to face any test if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created everyone on the path of monotheism. This is the test as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown to us, but the ways but the ways invited us towards being by the means of the noble prophets. Now those who did do shirk misuse the freedom of choice they have been given. Those who do sects, there are different sects in Islam, do separation, then they will be held accountable. Disagreement is valid, but to do separation is not permissible as it is disbelief. And the word of your Lord was fulfilled. Indeed, I will fill the hell with men and jinn altogether. We narrate these anecdotes of messengers, meaning Hazrat Nu, Hazrat Lut, Hazrat Sali, Hazrat Hud, Hazrat Shuaib, and Hazrat Musa. To what, to you, what we may, so to you, so that we may strengthen through them your heart. Meaning the heart of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is strengthened is in a such a way that he is shown how previous prophets were also rejected, how they were humiliated, how they were objected, were taken to show miracles, were also schemed against and were also murdered. In these audio uh, anecdotes come to, comes to you the truth and an exhortation and a reminder for the disbelievers. As for those who are, who are bent on believing, tell them, work according to your way and we are working according to our way. Meaning, we will work on our own, whether you believe it or not, keep doing shirk, 
do whatever opposition you want, but we will keep inviting you towards monotheism and will, will enjoin what is good and approved and forbid what is evil and disapproved. Here it is being shown that when the work of rectifying others becomes impossible, meaning you have to keep trying, but when the efforts are being stopped altogether, have become impossible, then we must leave people to their own. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seen, seeing everything. The work of a da'i, da'i, inviter towards Islam, is that he should call people towards the truth and call them how and when possible. But then a time comes when the opposition becomes so big as it is said. It is high time now to leave them as they are. And do wait for the end of things. We do are waiting. Meanwhile, torment befalls on those types of people who no matter what will not believe, will keep opposing the people of faith, make opposition, opposition their obligation, and all that is hidden in the heavens and, uh, and the earth lies within the power of Allah. Meaning we should leave it upon Allah. Allah alone will decide. Allah is, is seeing everything. Allah has the knowledge of the unseen. To him all matters referred for judgment. So do, deserve, so do serve him and place, him, place in him all your trust. Meaning if a person puts his trusts completely on Allah, then he can never be uneasy. He always hopes for the best from Allah. And he always remains happy and a satisfied person. Your Lord is not heedless of what you do. Here you have, we also have a lesson to learn about those who do not believe. Then we should not pay heed to their objections. Show them the truth that if it is not affecting them, then we must not waste our time and start living and sorry, and start inviting others towards the religion. Leave those who no matter what are not going to believe or will thread the path of the religion. And it is also very important for the da'i invited towards deen that he himself has a strong connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when his relationship is strong, then he is in close proximity of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely help him in a in every possible way. Then he will put his trust completely in Allah. He will not have any kind of uneasiness inside him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us also his friends and make us have alham, alhamdulillah. Make us have complete trust in his plans. Ameen. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah. We have completed Surah Hood. May Allah make us his friend, grant us the complete reliance on him. Ameen, O Allah, Ameen. This marks the end of our Surah Hood. I pray that may Allah protect us from all evil which caused the previous people to get punished. Ameen, Ameen, Ya Allah. Now we are going to begin Surah Yusuf. It is a Meccan Surah. It consists of 111 verses. In the ending verse of Surah Hu, it was mentioned, وَلِلَّهِ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِلَيْهِ That only Allah possesses the knowledge of unseen of earth and the heaven. In Surah Yusuf, it was made evident that indeed only Allah has the knowledge of the unseen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the story of Hazrat Yusuf salam, as the best story. The story teaches us many lessons. For example, perseverance, trustworthiness, insights, consistency, forbearance, arrogance, tolerance and encouragement. This surah was revealed to answer the question of the Jews 
then in that in what way the Bani Israel that how did Bani Israel ended up living in Egypt? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered it in detail in a single shot in the form of a beautiful story. And this story is explained altogether in a single chapter of the Quran, while the rest of the stories of the Quran are present at different places in the Quran. This story has a very beautiful style. It is narrated in Musnad Ahmad that Hazrat Umar radiallahu anha anhu came to the Messenger of Allah and said, O Messenger of Allah, I passed by a friend of mine from Koreza, it is a Jewish tribe, who wrote me some epitomes from the Torah. Shall I not recite them to you? Hearing this, the Messenger of Allah's face had changed. Abdullah ibn Thabit said, Do you not see what is in the face of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then Hazrat Umar removed his, eye, moved his eyes towards the face of the Prophet. Salam. Abdullah ibn Thabit said, We are well pleased with Allah as our Lord and Islam as our religion and Muhammad Salam is his messenger. The prophet, Prophet's anger abated and then he said, By the one in whose hand is my soul. If Musa salam, was present among you, you would have followed him and left me and surely you would have gone astray. You are among the nations that and nations, and I am your lot among the prophets. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Ra. Tilka ayatul kitabil mubin. The Alif Lam Ra. These are the verses of the clear book. The, this Quran explains all things in detail. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran that you might understand. Since the native language of the Arabs was Arabic, therefore it was sent in their language so they could understand it deeply. We relate, relate to you, O Muhammad, the best of stories in what we have revealed to you of this Quran, although you were before it among the unaware. The Jews were asking Prophet Muhammad sallam, but he had no knowledge. Therefore, Hazrat, uh, therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses about Hazrat Yusuf. Hazrat Yusuf was the son of Jacob. He had ten sons from his older wife and two sons from his younger wife. Hazrat Yusuf and Benjamin were the sons of the younger wife who had passed away. Of these stories mentioned when Joseph said to his father, O oh my father, I indeed have seen in a dream eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating to me. He said, O oh my son, do not relate your vision to your brothers or they will contrive against you a plan. Indeed, Satan to man is a, is a manifest and an enemy. True dreams come from Allah as a blessing. And thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of narratives. Al-Ahadith, that is, events of dreams, and complete his favor upon you, upon the family of Jacob, as he completed it upon your fathers before Ibrahim and Ishaq. Indeed, your Lord is knowing and wise. As Yusuf had a realization that it was a sign, uh, 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 Jacob had a realization that it was a sign of prophethood. Certainly were there in Joseph and his brothers signs for those who asked, such as the Jews and polytheists of Mecca who were asking the questions I refer to here. The character and bond of Jacob and Joseph was a sign for them. They had a loving father-son bond and we get to learn that we should not talk about our blessings with everyone, for example, a true dream. Hazrat Yusuf's name in the English Quran is as Joseph. It is the same thing. And we get to learn what we should not talk about, our blessing with everyone. For example, a true dream. We should hide our blessings so as to save from evil eyes since anyone can get envious about our blessings. 
when they said Joseph and his brother are more beloved to our father than we, while we are a clan, they meant that they were ten in number and altogether formed a big and strong group. Therefore they thought, what could make their father love those two more than the group? Indeed, our father is in clear error. Kill Joseph or cast him out to another land. The, the, the countenance that is attention of your father will then be only for you and you will be after that a righteous people. After all, they were the sons of a prophet. So their conscience was telling them that they were doing wrong and that later they should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become righteous. Said a speaker among them, do not kill Joseph, but throw him into the bottom of the well. Some travelers will pick him up if you would do something. It is said that the speaker was the eldest and virtuous son, some son named Yehuda, after which the entire nation was named Yehud Jewish. They said, O oh, our father, why do you not entrust us with Joseph, while indeed we are to him sincere counselors? After doing all the planning, they were trying to convince their father in order to make sure that their plan got executed. They were two-faced to their father, hiding their real intentions. Send with us, send him with us tomorrow so that he may eat well and play and indeed we will be his guide, we will be his guardians. Jacob said, indeed, it saddens me that you should take him and I fear that a wolf would eat him while you were unaware. They said, if a wolf, uh, if a wolf should eat him while we are a strong clan, clan indeed, we would then be losers. So when they took him out and I agreed to put him into the bottom of the well, but we inspired him, you will surely inform them some day about this affair of theirs while they do not perceive your identity. Joseph was very young and not provided prophethood at that time, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him. And they came to their father at night, weeping. They said, O oh, our father, indeed we went racing each other and left Joseph with, his, with our possessions and a wolf ate him. But you would not believe us even if, for truth, if we were truthful. And they brought upon his shirt, false blood was on the shirt. Jacob said, Brother, your souls have enticed you to something, so patience is most fitting. And Allah is the one sought for help against that which you describe. Here we, we take lessons from the excellent character of Jacob. He did not scold his children, but accepted it as a decree of Allah. And there came a company of travelers. Then they sent their water drawer and, let, and he let down his bucket. He said, good news, here is a boy. And they concealed him, taking him as merchandise. And Allah was knowing of what they did. And they sold him for a, for a reduced price, a few dirhams. And they, were, and they were concerning him of those content with little. They wanted to sell him quickly, fearing that the real owner of Joseph might come. They disrespected Joseph, but he did not complain anything about his brothers. When the travelers were talking, taking him out from the well, we should take a lesson from this, that if someone disrespects us, then we should not feel disappointed. Rather, we should hope for the best from Allah. Also, we should think that the disrespect happened because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to provide me more respect. And respect will be provided only if we are patient. Patience is a great virtue. So if you are not avenging the person who is unappreciated or dishonored you, rather rely completely, put your tawakkul on Allah. You hope for good from Allah, you accept the reward only from Allah. And say, Ya Allah, I am being patient and only you are sufficient for me. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciates it in a big way. He honors it in such a way that the person cannot even think. Then we are being shown 
And Adela says, the man from Egypt who bought him, who bought him said to his wife, take good care of him. Possibly he might be of benefit to us or we might adopt him as a son. Here, first of all, we can see foresightness, foresightedness of the Aziz, his sensibility. He was recognizing the diamond. And the other thing is, we were able to understand that when a person faces hardship, only then will he become strong. Just like gold turns into beautiful ornaments only after burning in the fire, diamonds show it shows shows its a diamond shows its brilliance only when they are carved. It is stated in Ibn Kasir, Abdullah bin Masood states that only three people who were the most foresight, most foresighted, completely focused on their goal. Akal Mandi se Darnewala have come to pass till now. They were this this nobleman from Egypt who was able to understand the importance of Yusuf, Yusuf alayhi salam. As soon as he saw him and instructed his, he instructed his wife to take good care of him. The next one is the girl who realized Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was as soon as she met him and told her father that if you want to help want to help then you can hire this man as he is strong and trustworthy. The third one is Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq who on his deathbed made Hazrat Omar Farooq his successor. This was the foresightedness of above mentioned people, their sensibility they were able to understand completely and clearly by a glance. They were not then we are being told thus we found a way for Joseph to become established in that land and in order that we might teach him to comprehend the deeper meaning of things. Whatever work that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was planning to take from Hazrat Yusuf was not at all possible from Canaan. This was the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken out Yusuf salam from the place. And the way that he adapted to do so is in front of you. It is a lesson for all of us that whenever we face hardships in our life, then we must understand that our Lord is preparing us, giving us training for a huge task that he has planned for us. We are being trained so that we can be strong. This is what had happened here also. He was taken to the house of the nobleman of Egypt. He was of high position and Yusuf salam would also be given a high position later on. This was why by living in that house, preparing for that post could be done. People of high position used to come to that house and by being in this sort of company, Hazrat Yusuf salam was trained. Allah has full power to implement his design, although most people do not know that. And when Joseph reached the age of maturity, we granted him judgment and knowledge. Meanwhile, we granted him wisdom to take correct decision at the correct time and granted him prophethood. Thus, do we, re do we reward those who do good? And it so happened that the lady in whose house Joseph was living sought to tempt him to herself. And one day, bolting the doors, she said, Come on now, Joseph. Come on now. Joseph answered, May Allah grant me refuge. My, my Lord has provided an honorable abode for me. So how can I do something so evil? Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, Oh my Lord, the nobleman of Egypt had provided an honorable abode. And I should do something so evil? Such wrongdoers never prosper. Meaning wrongdoers and sinners never prosper. People of wisdom say that if a person can control his emotions and desires, then a slave can also become a king. And if there is no control on emotions, 
then there comes a time upon the king that he is forced to become a slave. It is said that you also might have heard that one day of judgment, seven people will be under the shade of Allah's throne. One among them will be that man whom a beautiful and charming woman, charming woman would call towards evil and he says that he hears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she, adv and she advanced towards him and had Joseph not received the sign from his Lord, he too would have advanced towards her. According to the Torah, Yusuf salam, saw an image of his father, Yaqub salam, and he was giving warning by his he was given warning by this figure as if to say beware, but of course it's hard for us to believe in these kinds of tradition from Torah. But, but according to scholars, the word Burhan means sign and argue, argument. And here Rab ki Burhan means that particular sign which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the Hazrat Yusuf because of which he conscious his conscious chunk his conscience convinced his heart uh, to not accept the advances of this woman. This is not what becomes of me. So when a person is of a sound nature and has a good upbringing and seeks to avoid sins, then one good deed leads to another. And if someone is always sinning, then you will move towards doing sinful things. Thus, it is being said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the, the Imam of Yusuf alayhi salam. It is being said that for indeed he was one of our chosen servants. Meanwhile, he was sincere and pure. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also supported him. Then Allah ta'ala says, وَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابَ وَقَدَّتْ قَمِيصَهُ مِنْ دُبْرٍ وَأَلْفَيَا سَيِّدَهَا لَذَا الْبَابِ قَالَتْ مَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ أَرَادَ بِأَهْلِكَ سُوءًا إِلَّا أَنْ يُسْجَنَ أَوْ أَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Then both of them rushed to the door, each seeking to get ahead of the other, and she tore Joseph's shirt from behind. Then both of them found the husband of the lady at the door. Seeing him, he, she said, what should be the punishment of him who has foul designs on your wife, except that he should be imprisoned or subjected to painful chastisement? Now She was scheming against him. His intentions were wrong, but as soon as she saw her husband, her intentions were wrong, but as soon as she sees her husband, she says, Yusuf salam's intentions were wrong. I have hardly saved my life. Joseph said, it is she who was trying to tempt me to himself and a witness belonging to her household testified on grounds of circumstantial evidence. There are different traditions about this witness. One is that he was an older brother. He was the son of noble, uh, a nobleman's wife's paternal uncle. And the other is that he was a small, that he was a small baby from cradle. It has been narrated from Ibn Abbas and is in Ibn Qasi also that four babies have spoken from the cradle. First one is about the hairdresser of the daughter of Pharaoh who along with the children was being thrown in the boiling oil when one of her children spoke up assuring her not to be anxious and jump in the hot oil along with him. The second one was Yusuf salam's witness and when Juraj was accused and also a child spoke in favor of him and Isa ibn Maryam also spoke from the cradle witnessing in favors of his mother stating that she was innocent. If his shirt is torn from the front then she's telling the truth and he is a liar. But if his shirt is torn from behind then she has lied and he is truthful. So when the husband saw Joseph's shirt torn from behind he exclaimed surely this is one of the tricks of you women. Meanwhile, he understood that his wife was Meanwhile, he understood that his wife was at fault. That means the, the, the minister understood that his wife was at fault. Your tricks are indeed great. Joseph 
disregard this and you woman ask forgiveness for your sin for indeed it is you who has been at fault because by now he had understood who was at fault and some ladies in the city began to say the chief's wife violent is violently in love with her house boy he is she is out to tempt him mean what meaning she is enticing him is madly in love with him and love has made her go out of control we think she is clearly mistaken meaning that she is being cheap to be in love with her slave hearing of their sly talk the chief's wife sent for those ladies and arranged for them a banquet and got ready couches and gave each guest a knife then while they were cutting eat and eating the fruit she signaled joseph come out to them when the ladies saw him they were so struck with admiration that they cut their hands exclaiming allah preserve us this is no normal human being this is nothing but a noble angel she said so now you see this is the one regarding whom you reproached me it is said that only one amongst them had cut her hands hand and then and when yusuf alayhi salam saw the blood he went to give her first aid obviously he was just a slave of the house and on seeing this all the women seated seated starting to start to cut their hands so that yusuf alayhi salam can give his attention to them also focus on them it is also said that they were so moved by the beauty of hazrat yusuf alayhi salam that they cut their hands upon seeing him and were wounded indeed i tried to keep him myself but he held back although if he were not to follow my order he he would certainly be imprisoned and humiliated she was proud of her sinful actions was a very dare was was very daring to be arrogant of her sinful deeds as if she was doing something great Then Allah Taala says, Joseph said, "My Lord, I prefer imprisonment to what they ask me to do. And if you do not avert from me the guile of these women, I will succumb to their attract- attraction and lapse into ignorance." Meaning, Yusuf alayhi salam is praying earnestly to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that he be sent to jail so that he can escape the scheming of these women, so that he may be safe from the e- from their evil. On the other hand, the vulgarity and indeed behavior prevalent in the society during those ta- times is being described here and how wife of the nobleman was was audaciously telling her love story in front of all her female guests with proud arrogance fastajaba lahu rabbu فصرف عنه كيدهن انه هو السميع العليم so his lord responded to him turning their cunning away from him surely he is the all hearing all knowing allah almighty heard the supplication of yusuf alayhi salam and made the plannings of these these uh, ladies unsuccessful and so it occurred to those in charge despite seeing all the proofs of his innocence that he should be imprisoned for a while they knew that yusuf alayhi salam was innocent However, they also knew that they could not stop these ladies. Therefore, they decided to imprison him instead. Hazrat Yusuf grew up in a religious household since his father was a prophet. Now he was, he, he now he was in a non-religious setting and was being sent to, to prison for something that he hadn't done. This was a test for Yusuf alayhi salam from Allah subhanahu wa taala to train him and make him stronger. Similarly, any difficulties that we come across are there to train us, and they're indeed our path towards success. We must never get disappointed because of small hurdles. We must instead make our connection stronger with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. A strong connection with Allah Taala will help face any difficulty with strong faith that Allah will not leave us alone in these difficult times. Hence, it becomes easy. to observe and go through that difficult difficulty with patience and perseverance 
and two other servants went to jail with Joseph, that is Yusuf alayhi salam. One of them said, I dreamt I was pressing wine. The other said, I dreamt I was carrying some bread in my hand, I'm sorry, on my head, from which birds were eating. Then both said, tell us their interpretation, for we surely see you as one of the good doers. People who are righteous are easily recognized wherever they go. People who are righteous and do good deeds never have to boast about their deeds because their good actions speak for themselves. We have discussed three out of four phases of Yusuf alayhi salam's life. His father's house, time after being retrieved from the well, the phase where he spent his days in the house of Egypt's treasurer Al-Aziz, when he was thrown in jail, when he will be appointed, the fourth one is when he will be appointed as the treasurer of Egypt. So Yusuf salam said, I can even tell you what kind of meal you will be served before you receive it. This knowledge is from what my Lord has taught me. I have shunned the faith of the people who disbelieve in Allah and deny the hereafter. Yusuf salam initially called them to Allah and tried to introduce the message of faith to them. He gave all the credit of his abilities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a lot of humility. I follow the faith of my fathers, Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Ishaq alayhi salam, and Yaqub alayhi salam. It is not right for us to associate anything with Allah in worship. This is part of Allah's grace upon us and humanity. But most people are not grateful. Yusuf alayhi salam told them, that after much observation, I have chosen the path of Allah, not because they were my forefathers, but because this is the only true path. That means he's saying, I did not choose the path because my forefathers were on that path, path. but I chose the path because it is the only true path. All my fellow prisoners, which is far better, many different lords, or Allah, the one, the supreme. Whatever idols you worship instead of him are mere names which you and your forefathers have made up. A practice Allah has never authorized. It is only Allah who decides. He has commanded that you worship none but him. That is the upright faith, but most people do not know. Just like how disbelievers of uh, Mecca used to worship Lat, Manat and Uzzah, these people also made up imaginary idols and used to worship them. So Yusuf salam tried to reason with them and show them the right path towards the oneness of Allah Almighty. He told them that Allah himself has forbidden us to worship any, anyone except him. He is the greatest, the sustainer of all mankind. O oh, my fellow prisoners, the first one of you will serve wine to his master and the other will be crucified and the birds will eat from his head. The matter about which you inquired has been decided. In this verse, verse, the lesson for us is that we must only inquire about our dreams from people who are knowledgeable in this regard and who are sincere with us. Anyone who envies us will not guide us correctly about the meaning of our dreams. Once a dream is interpreted in a certain way, it is likely that it will come true in that particular way only. It is mentioned in Tafsir the Tabri that both prisoners denied seeing such a dream after knowing the interpretation. This shows that sometimes people tell fake dreams and seek their interpretations, which may come true. Therefore, we must refrain from doing this. Whenever we, we encounter a bad dream, we must recite Auzu Billah and then dry spit thrice on our left side, turn on the opposite side and go back to sleep. Never discuss a bad dream with anyone. It is mentioned in Musnad Ahmad that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, dreams are attached to the foot of a bird until they are interpreted. Then they, when, and then when they are interpreted, they come to pass. In another narration, it is said that the first interpretation of a dream is actually what becomes true. Then he said to the one he knew, would survive. Mention me in the presence of your master, but Satan made him forget to mention Joseph to his master. So he remained in this prison for several years. A person who is innocent is allowed to use any recourse available at his disposal. 
at, sorry, at his disposal. That's what Yusuf did here. However, some people interpret, interpret this verse differently. They believe that Yusuf did not have faith in Allah. That's why he asked the prisoner to mention about him. And that's why Yusuf had to spend such a long time in the prison, prison because of weak faith. However, it was solely Allah's planning that he stayed for such a long duration in the prison. And one day the king said, I dreamt of seven fat cows eaten by seven skinny ones and seven green ears of grain and seven others dry. O oh, chiefs, tell me the meaning of my dream if you can interpret dreams. They replied, these are confused visions and we do not know the interpret interpretation of such dreams. Dreams are of three types. True dreams that are from Allah. The second one is bad dreams that are from shaitan. Uh, the third one is confused dreams that are, are a result of our own mind. Finally, the surviving ex-prisoner re remembered Yusuf after a long time and said, I will tell you its interpretation, so send me forth to Joseph, that is Yusuf He said, Joseph, O oh man of truth, interpret for us the dream of seven fat cows eaten by seven skinny ones and seven green ears of corn and seven others dry, so that I may return to the people and let them know. Yusuf replied, he will plant grain for seven consecutive years, leaving in the uh, ear whatever you will harvest, except for the little you will eat. Then after that will come seven years of great hardship, which will consume whatever you have saved, except the little you will store for seed. Yusuf did not once complain why this man why this man didn't keep his promise after leaving the prison. In fact, he not only interpreted the dream for him, but also provided him with the solution. That's a true representation of a righteous man. Then after that will come a year in which people will receive abundant dream and they will pass oil and wine. The king then said, bring him to me. When the messenger came to him, Joseph said, Go back to your master and ask him about the case of the women who cut their hands. Surely my Lord has full knowledge of their cunning. The king asked the women, What did you get when you tried to seduce Joseph? They replied, Allah forbid, we knew nothing in, we, we knew nothing indecent about him. Then the chief minister's wife admitted, Now the truth has come to light. It was I who tried to seduce him and he is surely truthful. From this, Yusuf should know that I did not speak dishonestly about him in his absence. For Allah certainly does not guide the scheming for, for the dishonest. The widely believed opinion is that these are the words of Yusuf that he did not speak dishonestly about the Aziz and his wife in his absence. However, there is another opinion that these are the words of Al-Aziz's wife herself. She's telling Yusuf that she did not speak dishonestly about him in his absence and accepted her sin. Allah Almighty is a custodian of every prophet's respect and character. Although they are also human like us, but Allah Almighty bestows them with, satisfi with a satisfied soul. Therefore, they are far from such worldly mistakes. This is Allah Almighty's mercy on them and Allah blesses it on who, whomsoever he pleases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never lets evil schemes of dishonest people succeed. Sooner or later, he reveals the truth in favor of the innocent. Since Allah Almighty had decided to bestow a huge responsibility on Yusuf alayhi salam, therefore he proved him innocent in front of everybody. Imam Bukhari was once traveling on a ship. Someone saw that he was carrying a thousand gold coins with him in a pouch. He schemed against Imam Bukhari and started shouting that he had uh, lost his pouch of 1,000 gold coins. Imam Bukhari secretly threw his pouch in the sea. Later, when the ship reached, reached its destination, the man who created the chaos inquired uh, from Imam Bukhari that, what did you do with the gold coins? Imam Bukhari replied, I threw them away. The man was shocked to hear this and asked, why did he do that? And Imam Bukhari replied, if the blame that you were putting on me was wrongly proved, no one would have ever accepted my work of compiling the hadith. People who do the work of religion 
must be extremely conscious of their reputation. If ever such a person betrays the responsibility given to him by Allah Almighty, then he, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reveals that person's betrayal in front of everyone. It is not acceptable for Allah Almighty that anyone who betrays his religion preaches, preaches it to other people. Uh, Jews 12 consisted of two surahs, um, uh, Surah Hud and Surah Yusuf. In this, um, in Surah Hud, Allah Ta'ala is telling us about the perfection of the Quran, the glorious Quran, and uh, its verses. And then in Surah Hud, Allah Ta'ala also tell, talks about the principles of Islamic creed and presents the stories of the prophets Nu, Hud, Sali, Ibrahim, Lut, Shuaib, and Musa. Peace be upon them in detail so that they are followed as examples. The command to be patient of harm and to rely on Allah. The command to be patient when in harm and to rely on Allah. In Surah Yusuf, the story of Hazrat Yusuf salam, peace be upon him, comes and which is narrated uh, in this surah completely from the beginning till end. Along with its lessons and examples, the story of Hazrat Yusuf and his dream, then Hazrat Yusuf in the well, then Hazrat Yusuf in the house of the Azizi Misr, and then Hazrat Yusuf in jail. Okay, uh, now, uh, uh, as uh, Jews 12 is ending, uh, see what are the uh, points uh, to ponder upon in this Jews. In Ayat 6, Allah says, Allah knows every creature's risk, provisions, and place of rest, even though there are millions of creatures in the universe. Then in Ayah 7, he says he created the seven heavens, even earths, uh, heavens, seven earths, and the arsh and all of us. Why? To test us. All khair and shar comes to us to test us, to see which one of us is best in deeds. Whose deeds are the best. What do we do when faced with a test? In Ayat 9 tells us don't despair and don't be ungrateful when you face a problem. It's just a test from Allah. So be a true believer and show patience while continuing to do good deeds as this will cleanse your soul and bring you great reward. Then in Ayat number 11 Allah Ta'ala is telling us, except for those who are patient and do righteous deeds, those will have forgiveness and great reward. Only place in the Quran where Allah accompanies Amil Swalihat with Sabaru instead of Amanu, showing us that the times of tests and trials, be it of ease or difficulty, no doubt Sabar is important, but accompanying that Sabar with continuous good Amal is necessary too. That's the real purpose of the test, to make us learn to continue with good deeds, with sabr, in spite of the burden of the test we are facing. That's where the mercy and ajar of Allah comes and raises us in degrees of righteousness. In Ayat 10 of Surah Hud, Allah Ta'ala says, When you get out of trouble or solve a problem, never fall into the trap of saying, Because I did this and this, everything was okay. Remember, it was only Allah who took you out of that situation. Instead of boasting, say Alhamdulillah. In Ayah 13 and 14, Allah is telling us, Are you not convinced when you read the Quran that it is the truth? We know the Quran and everything in it is the truth. But do we follow the instruction in it as well? 
point to ponder. Ayat 15 and 16, whoever does a good deed only to gain some benefit in the, in the life of this world and doesn't have any, any intention of pleasing Allah nor preparing for the meeting with him will have nothing but the fire in the Akhirah. Allahumma jirna min al nar Ayat 23, be humble. If you want to go to Jannah, you have to adopt humility along with having iman and doing good deeds. Ayat 29, every prophet can wade the message of Allah without looking towards worldly benefits. They expected their reward from Allah and had no greed of wealth in their hearts. Ayat 39, whenever you do something for the sake of Allah and people laugh at you, don't get embarrassed or discouraged. Just think of Noah alayhi salam when he was constructing the ark. His reward is with Allah. The mockers will be ridiculed on the day of judgment and you will be laughing, inshallah. Ayat 41, saying Bismillah before any significant deed is one of the best powerful habits you can teach yourself and your children. Ayat 43 to 45, name, caste, lineage, righteous parents will never help to save us from Allah's punishment. Only our righteous deeds will help us and save us. Ayat number 47, when after doing so many good deeds, even after calling his people to Allah for 950 years, even being a prophet, Nuh salam, feared Allah would be angry at him for questioning about the fate of his son. What about us? Do we dare to question Allah for his decisions? For us, let's learn from Prophet Nuh salam and, and memorize his dua. Rabbi inni a'udhu bika an as'alaka ma laysa li bihi ilm wa illa taghfir li wa tarhamni wa tarhamni akum min al-khasirin khasirin my lord i seek refuge in you from asking that of which i have no knowledge and unless you forgive me and have mercy upon me i will be among the losers in ayat number 50, the crime of the people of Ard was that they followed the evil chiefs and elite of their clan and rejected Allah and his messenger. Do we see a similar behavior in our communities? Ayat number 52, seeking forgiveness of Allah and repenting to him brings about provisions and strength. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us this dua, taught this dua to a man. Allahumma ghfirli warhamni Wahdini, wa'afini, warzukni. O Allah, forgive me, have mercy on me, protect me, and provide me with sustenance. He, sallallahu alayhi wa said, Surely this supplication is better for you in this life and in the hereafter. Let's memorize it, a dua for khair in both worlds. Ayat 72 and 73. When good and wonderful things come to the slave, do not be so caught up in amazement and stunned thought. Your Lord is able to do anything. The command and decree of Allah is not a surprise for the slave who knows the power and capability of Allah. This is why the angels exclaimed back, Do you wonder at the decree of Allah? May the mercy of Allah be upon you. See, at the point when you recognize a great um, ni'mah, blessing of Allah, there is a blessed moment in which your initial reaction is recorded with heaviness on the scales. What is required of you at that point is immediate gratitude and for you to praise Allah and exalt him without a delay. This is just one of the reasons why the verse ends with indeed he is praiseworthy and honorable. Allah is remain, reminding us through the words of his angels about our actions at such a moment. He is effectively teaching us how to deal with him and his blessings. Ayat 74, a believer is caring at heart. He not only worries about himself, but all his brothers and sisters in deen. Prophet Ibrahim was given the good news of a son in his old age. His dua was finally accepted. He was happy for himself, but then worried about the coming punishment on the people of Lut. The sincerity of the prophets is such a beautiful thing to read about. These were legends, great men who desired nothing more than, the, more than that Allah be worshipped in the land. They wanted nothing but guidance for their people. They didn't desire wealth 
or fame or social ranking. Just the people turned to their creator and were saved in this life and the next. Let's learn from the prophets. Ayat 77 to 83. The actions of the people of Lut salam, were forbidden by Allah. They declared a major sin. Allah sends his curse and punishment on people who, who do this. Homosexuality is haram. And we know that the verses of the Quran, that those who support it, like wife of Prophet Lut, will be with those who will be punished for doing this haram act. Beware. Ayat 84 to 85, never cheat when selling or even buying things. Never alter weight, deceive people by certain types of marketing and other such gimmicks. Ayat number 88, when you advise people to good, explain, the, explain with wisdom and kindness. Don't argue with them, but explain that you only wish good for them and wish to be together with them in Jannah. Ayat 97 to 98, Pharaoh was a leader to evil and oppressive actions in dunya. So he will be a leader on the day of Qiyamah as well, a leader leading his followers to the hellfire. At the hadith of our Prophet beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah will, be, will let the wrongdoer continue until when he begins to punish him. He will never let him go. Then he Sallallahu recited this ayah of Surah Hud, such as the seizure of your Lord, when he seizes the population of the towns while they are doing wrong, wearily his seizure is painful and severe. May Allah Ta'ala guide us and help us act on his guidance before it's too late. Ameen. Ayat 106 to 108. Waste to good deeds and to Jannah. The blessed ones with heavy scales of good deeds will have a pleasant eternal life in Jannah. Allahumma rabbana ja'alna minhum. Allah make us from those. While those who were busy in doing evil deeds will end up screaming eternal, eternally in hellfire. Ayat 114, good deeds wipe out bad deeds by the grace of Allah. If you feel guilty of after sinning, do a good deed. Even if it is as simple as saying, La ilaha illallah. Ayat 119, Allah will fill hell with jinn and men altogether. Pray you are not one of them. Allahumma jirna min an Ayat 120. When you feel down or weak in Iman, read stories of the Prophets and ask Allah to make firm your heart thereby. Allah has written numerous stories and examples in the Quran to console the Prophet and his followers' hearts. All stories comfort us and make us learn sabr and tawakkul. Okay, now let's discuss the points to ponder in Surah Yusuf. When the Yehud, um, uh, this is Surah uh, Ayat number uh, two and three, when the Yehud asked Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu about Yusuf Alaihissalam to test his knowledge, Allah revealed the whole story to inform him as a form of consolation. But to him, it's a story full of lessons of all types for all ages. You will learn something new every time you read this beautiful surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it the best story. Make learning the Arabic language with the intention to understand the Quran a priority. Ayat number five, dreams are of three types. Good dreams are from Allah. We should narrate them only to a beloved one. Bad dreams are from shaitan to worry us. If we get a bad dream, we should recite is the Aza, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, thrice and spit on the left and turn on the, to the other side and not tell anyone about it. And third type is from your own mind of the happenings around you. Relate good dreams only to a loved one and not to those of, of whom you fear jealousy. Ayat number eight, stay away from uh, Hasad, envy. Envy and Iman cannot stay together. It eats up good deeds and it's characteristic. It's a characteristic of shaitan. A true servant of Allah cannot feel jealous. He's content with what Allah has chosen for him and for others. Whenever you see Allah blessing people with what you also desire, then make, make a dua for it instead of in envying people. Ask him of his bounties for you and the people. He is the possessor of infinite treasures and he hears and responds to all duas. Ayat number nine, you can't plan a bad deed and say, I'll just repent afterwards.
Ayat number 18, learned sabr from Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam. He controlled his sadness and his anger for the sake of Allah and accepted the decision of Allah. Would we react in the same way if a similar news is delivered to us? Whenever bad news comes to you, tell yourself patience is most fitting. Sabrun Jamil. Ayat 23, there are seven whom Allah will shade with his shade on the day when there will be no shade except his and one of them is a man who is called by a woman of rank and beauty and says, I fear Allah, and turns away from the temptation. This is from Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Ayat number 32, committing a sin and then being proud of it and letting everyone know about it is piling sin upon sin and losing all chances of forgiveness from Allah. Ayat 33 to 34, believers prefer prison than the disobedience of Allah. 35. Fear Allah and always seek his help to stay steadfast on his deen and Allah will in turn help you and protect you from fitna. Ayat 36 to 41. Are you of those who forget all their obligations, duties and manners when they are caught up in a huge problem? Learn from Yusuf alayhi He cared for the guidance of others and didn't forget his duties as a believer and called people to Allah even when he was in prison. He showed his excellent character, even in prison, so his prisoners trusted him, confided in him and sought his help. Ayat 45 to 52, never doubt the wise planning of Allah. He knows while you, while, while you don't. Reflect on how Allah saved Yusuf from the prison and how the wife of Aziz accepted his sin and praised the pious character of Yusuf alayhi salam.